Good morning, everyone. So when do you know you've really arrived in life? What if I tell you that you never really arrive? It's like 20 years ago when I climbed my first high mountain. Every time I finished climbing a ridge, there was another one waiting for me. I looked up and there was more to go. And this went on and on for about six to seven hours till I was at my wit's end. These two lines from Rudyard Kipling's If kept on resonating in my head. If you can force your heart and will and sinew to serve you long after they're gone, and so hold on when the only thing that is left in you is the will that says hold on. That's the day when I actually understood the meaning, the true meaning of the word potential. I had walked like I had never walked before. So what's potential? Potential is this gap between where are you today versus where you can be later in the evening, tomorrow morning, day after, in a week's time, in a year's time. In terms of how you think, how you behave, how you respond, how you approach things. And that gap between where you are today and where you can be is your potential. So who decides where you can be? Well, it's you. It all depends on where do you want to be. Now let's take a step back and understand this word called hardwiring. And I'm talking about hardwiring of the brain. The hardwiring of the brain simply is the way in which your brain is preconditioned to think. All the data that your brain has collected so far from the earliest memory that you have as a child to all the experiences that you've had, all the people around you, your ecosystem has come together and made this hardwiring or preconditioning of your brain. And one of the bigger part of the hardwiring is something called habits. Habits are your default button. These are the patterns in which first you think and then you do. So one of the key habits that I want to talk about today is the mindset of excellence. Mindset of personal excellence. Mindset of personal excellence basically means how do I be better each time, better than before. So there are two things contributing to building a mindset of excellence. And first of them is called wow. So let's talk about habits. Let's go back to habits. So I'm saying, what if we do an assessment of our habits every now and then? And for that, I'm going to give you this model. It's called the WOW model. It's a very simple model. The first W stands for what are the habits that help me win? You know what? I'm a great listener. I really like that about myself. OK, I'm going to keep it. I think I'm going to continue with that. The O stands for the opportunity to embrace new habits. Are there any new habits that I can take on? I wish I was more punctual. I wish I was always on time. So here's an opportunity for you to learn on and build on a new habit. The second W stands for wriggling out. Can I wriggle out of something which is no longer working for me? You know what? Procrastination. I do not like the fact that I procrastinate. I keep on putting things to tomorrow. So maybe there's a way I can put a stop to it and I'm going to wriggle out of it. So the first tool that I'm going to give to you for building a mindset of, excell uh, of excellence is to do a wow of your habits. Every once in six months, sit with a pen and paper and do a wow. Now the second thing I want to talk about, the second contributor to building a mindset of excellence is something called flow. So this has been work of the famous Mihaly Shen Mihaly's and his theory of flow says that how do you make sure that you are neither overwhelmed, not bored when in a task? So how do you know you are in a flow? Your energies are high. You're really happy. You're really focused. And you look forward to things. 
but how do we create flow, especially when we have to do boring stuff? You know what? I know I have to do math, but I find it really boring. What I really want instead is to be sitting and reading my books. I like reading. So how do I create a state of flow when I am bored? And here's a quick tool that I've made for you in the last few days, and I'm calling it Intermittent Surge. It's a very simple, easy to use tool. It uses a principle of 20, 10, 30, 10, and 40, 10, where 10 is fixed, and 20, 30, 40 is variable. It's very simple to use. So for every 20 or 30 minutes of boring stuff that you need to do, you reward yourself with 10 minutes of exciting things that you like to do. So every 20 or 30 minutes of the math that you really need to do, how about rewarding yourself with 10 minutes of you know, reading that exciting book that you want to read? In this way, the boring stuff gets done as well. Let me take you back to when I decided to get a diving certification. I thought, let me go diving. And let me not just go diving, let me get a certification. So I was really excited about exploring the oceans, you know, exploring the corals, the fish, being like a fish with a tank on my back. And I arrive at the dive school. Little did I know that I'd, I also had to cover six hours of theory and instrument tests. How boring. It almost killed the buzz. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. I just want to put a tank and dive. So I immediately came up with the method, intermittent surge. I walked up to my instructor and I said, sir, for every one hour of theory that I do in the classroom, can you give me 30 minutes in the ocean? And the instructor agreed. So I covered six hours of theory and instrument learning, along with three hours, extra hours of time in the ocean. So intermittent surge in flow. And it helped me create a flow for myself. You know, I'm my own guinea pig, in the sense that I believe that I can be whoever I want to be. My career path makes no sense in the practical terms. Just as I would reach the pinnacle of what I was doing, I would do something so wildly different and new that it would create a havoc in my ecosystem. So grade 10, 90% in science. Obviously, she's going to take science in grade 11. I did. I studied science for two months. Moved on to commerce, graduated in commerce, almost became a chartered accountant. Went ahead and did textiles. Worked in high innovation and design environment in production setup for more than a decade. I worked with some of the best innovation and design teams in the world. Advanced innovation team of Nike in Oregon is one of them. I specialized in converting technology into wearable technology. I was known in the industry for taking technology to market. I also was known as a business head. Stop that became an experiential educator, both for the kids and grown-ups. I love this space. And you know what? Three years ago, I also became a consultant chef for the love of food. So I know, while it makes no sense, it kept me in a constant state of flow. My unwavering faith in this word potential helps me keep a focus on building a mindset of excellence. The discipline of doing a wow every now and then and making sure that I'm creating a state of flow for myself ensured that there was an expert level execution in all of these, each one of these diverse industries that I worked in. So I am a master of none and jack of all trades. But that works for me. I'm really happy about who I am today. I'm more excited about who I'm going to be tomorrow. Reminds me of this line from Invictus by William Ernst Henley. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. So every time you think you've arrived, hold on. Take a step back. 
tell yourself, okay, you know, can I do a wow? Shall I do my, create my flow? Should I use intermittent surge? Create a flow for myself. And every time you think you've arrived, just go and stand in front of the mirror, look at yourself and say, thoda or, a little bit more. Thank you.